Hi guys, are you here from Blender Bros and in this video I want to show you something that may change the way you look at the industry and also at your own work. Let's get started. Alright, so this is an official website of Land Rover in Japan, which is a luxurious car, especially the new, you know, the flagship. And we're going to be talking about the flagship model. By the way, it's used by the royal family in UK. So, you know, quite an important car. And the price is really steep. You know, it's close to uh, to the price of S-Class bands. So, you know, really expensive car, right? Now, everything seems fine. Um, but what I want to show you is... Uh, let's go to a gallery here. And let's look at the... Uh, at the gallery of the exterior so here and i want to show you something really shocking if it loads what the hell no the side doesn't even work jesus christ who the fuck is in charge of this shit it should be fucking shot there we go exterior there we go right so now you know everything seems fine more or less um, we're gonna be scrolling through these images, but then you know eventually we're gonna arrive at image that just kind of caught my attention. Okay, this one. Now, if you're struggling with design, detailing, renders, camera angle, lighting, post processing, and presentation, then I would suggest three very strong courses. One of them is design course, Blender Bros design course, which is fantastic and will teach you all these important things theory and practical part are included it's a very popular course second course will be the mobile generator in blender which can consists of two parts one of them is modeling and the other one is actually very interesting it's photorealistic renders which means we're going to be covering exactly what these people from land rover failed to do so rendering an image and actually blending it seamlessly with the background and third course is a compositing for 3D artworks. And this one is only available on our Blender Bros coaching and community program. So you need to become a member in order to have access to it. And this course covers advanced compositing in Photoshop. So we're going to take a render and we're going to composite it with some interesting background and create a beautiful sort of like a scenery uh, for a portfolio. Now, these three courses will be very highly recommend to anyone who would like to improve the portfolio and create better artwork in general. I've noticed this several times in different images on different websites, but this is really striking. At glance, probably you don't see what the hell I'm talking about, but basically this image is an absolute fucking garbage, okay? This is, if, if I was in charge of the, you know, of the advertisement for Range Rover and someone came to me with this, they would be fired on a spot because that is just absolutely unacceptable. And let me tell you why. If you really carefully look at the shadows and also the sharpness of this image, there's a lot of issues, okay? So first of all, uh, I'm going to bring it to Photoshop, right? And I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. So let me just screen grab this, right? So here in Photoshop, I can show you something really, really shocking. So now if you analyze shadows and sharpness of this image and then shadows and sharpness and actually brightness of this car, there are a few things that do not match. First of all, and the, that's the most important one, is the shadows. If you look at the shadows on the image, okay, if you look at the shadow of this fence here, how long it is, it's almost as long as the fence itself. This means the sun has to be really low in the sky. Also, it indicates that the sun is more or less behind somewhere, you know, somewhere there, okay? So, somewhere in this area, okay? And it's shining this way, right? And this is what's causing this, um, this shadow to be cast here. And you can also see that on the top, because the shadow um, on these elements, which are the same depth as the top, um, as the top gutter here, right? So these elements here are the same depth as this, yet the shadow is twice as twice as deep. You see that twice as long. The shadow here is twice as long as this one, which means the sun is not shining from the top; it's shining from here. Now the light on the car is different guys, it's not falling directly from the top because you can see that there's a shadow here and also short shadow on the mirror, it means 
that the light probably comes from this angle but it's not um, behind the car like in this image but it's actually to the side of the car now the sharpness of the car is not a problem guys okay the the ground here is blurry okay here is even more blurry but the car is you know sharper than the ground and you know the car has a depth which means it goes into the image which means it should be uh, becoming progressively more uh, blurred but it doesn't you know it doesn't become more blurred and also here is way more sharp than the ground now if you zoom this image far you can start seeing that even the camera angle and i think the scale of the car is off it just doesn't match it looks like you've been you know pasted from another story so what's gonna happen is that most people will not notice it the way i do but the brain will notice that subconsciously and basically what's gonna happen is they will reject the image okay the brain will uh, reject the image so when you're going to look at this image you will think that something is actually off and you will reject it so this advertisement becomes you know completely ineffective and in fact it prevents you from buying this car because your brain doesn't like it okay subconsciously even if you can't see that and let me tell you why because we are so used to seeing cars or, or items outside when we go outside in a natural setting with the correct shadows brightness angle sharpness etc that we automatically can see that and even if you don't realize it the way i do right because maybe you know you, you just uh, haven't developed the skill to see that yet but your brain subconsciously will reject it and you, you will think well there's something wrong with this image but you don't know what and you're not gonna like it in the in, in the result that's the result of it right so the advertisement actually hampers the sales of the car now before we jump into talking about decal machine so i would like to tell you that there is a free course right now you can download and start working on hard surface model from scratch to a final render and this course utilizes the machine tools add-on and also utilizes PowerServe, which is a fantastic add-on so if you would like to put the knowledge into practice and start using machine tools and get used to add-on workflow this is your fantastic chance so go ahead to our website link in the video description go to blenderdos.com download the course and enjoy now the problem with the render is the composition okay the composition doesn't work for me here um, i think this should be um, slightly redone there's a lot of negative space here which doesn't make any bloody sense unless you're gonna put some text in here or some kind of advertisement this uh, composition here doesn't make it just makes zero sense to me this car should be moved in here and something should be put in here okay this element here has to go this has to be darkened down this is way too pulling in my opinion it competes with the car you get pulled in here to this area okay these windows are way too close to the car and they create a massive area of contrast and in my opinion there should be a bright uh, broader gap here between you know between the car and the window now if i'm going to content aware this and i'm going to actually try to fix this i don't know if i'm going to be able to fix it but i'll try let me just go to pen tool and i'm going to trace around it here like this right so you see how cleaner this becomes how much more attention comes to the car immediately if i'm going to group them right and turn them off you see what i mean the same thing with you know with this element here this is way too bright in my opinion this element here right it should be darker so what i would do either darken this down you know this one here right or just uh, replace it with something else you know so mark make selection and then you know either content will fail or just do something else with it you know this would be probably better because if, you know if, you just don't look there anymore right you just don't look there anymore you you look at the car now look at this look how calm this picture became okay so i'm going to put it in here and i'm going to turn it on and off right see what i mean now the composition here is a little bit off you know like i said and the car should be probably somewhere here and then text here will be much more powerful connection between the car and the and the text uh, someone was trying to go for an edgy sort of uh, look that the car is you know really close to the uh, to the left hand side edge of the of the frame but since the face of the car is facing to the left you know this entire part becomes redundant now this uh, this room here that's you know uh, with glass windows kind of rescues the situation uh, because you you know your attention goes here and and you you know you kind of start thinking well this is pretty cool 
and it's sort of off balancing the car here but you know we're not really interested in the in the house we're interested in the car so i would basically use a completely different background for this uh, this is not a very fortunate background so you can clearly see that even a company like this like land rover right uh, which has a shit ton of money and they're probably hiring you know top professionals can come up with a you know with a with a really bad advertisement like this for their flagship car i mean that's just appalling another one here is a classic example of just uh, absolutely wrong shadows uh, because if you look at this uh, car and if you look at the shadow on this charger they're completely different the shadow on the car is going from the top down you can clearly see that it's slightly angled to the left because um, you know, because of the mirror, uh, mirror uh, shadow, you can see that. So it's kind of sun is probably somewhere here, so it's casting this way. But this, you know, shadow here is coming from a completely different angle. So um, this is also a bit off. Not as bad as the previous one, but it's also a bit off. And the, you know, the the, the far better merged in here in terms of uh, sharpness and colors and brightness because if you look at the brightness level of this car and this building they actually match really well but if you go back to uh to the previous one which was uh, here they just don't okay in my opinion this doesn't match this car is a bit too bright for the background okay so there you go guys and there's another example i want to show you this on the hotmail website it's actually really cool this one's been there for ages okay and if you look closely at this picture, you can see that the uh, uh, the front eye here of her front eye, this one, is blurry, whereas the other one is sharp. This is a classic example of a rookie mistake of a photographer. This is just like, this, if I shot this, this would be an automatic delete from my camera. I wouldn't even, you know, I would even go forward and down to my to my uh, PC. This would be gone during chimping, okay, through through the pictures. So uh, th this is an absolute outrage, and this has been on the on the Hotmail site for like fucking two or three years, and uh, <laughs> it's it's absolutely outrageous. If you're shooting portraits, okay, uh, or anything really, you want the immediate element of attention to be sharp, that's closest to the camera. So if you're shooting a human. And you're shooting eyes, and eyes is something that we're gonna be focused on immediately when we're gonna see the picture. You want the first eye that's closest to the camera to be sharp. Okay, so I'm gonna give you an example. If I would be shooting someone from the side, and uh, one of their eyes would be, let's just take my wife for example. Okay, so you see that th this eye is really sharp, and this eye is already blurry right this is a you know this is how you do it but this other picture is just completely reverse it's a perfect example this is how you do it okay if i had this eye sharp and this one blurry this entire image would not make any bloody sense because that's when you're gonna look first okay it's just it's just human nature so this is you know if i was in charge of of microsoft advertisement whoever put this on on, on the website is fired immediately it's just it's unacceptable basically so here you go guys even people in top positions in the industry come up with pokies like this so you know don't be that person but at the same time don't beat yourself up and don't think that you're not good enough because you know anyone and everyone makes mistakes the point is to just keep trying to become better and better keep working on yourself keep working on your folio keep improving always research and study never stop this is the best way to, you know, climb and climb and climb. And uh, to be honest, uh, you have to be really self-critical strongly towards your work. You know, if I look at my renders five minutes after I render something or finish processing something, I usually spot issues. There's no such thing as a perfect render. There's always going to be something that you're not going to like. But that's actually a very good thing because that means that you are improving. If you look at your old renders, like from, you know, six months or a year ago, and you think they're not good enough, that means you, you've learned something, you've improved, and that's good. So you can either redo them or change them or upload something new or simply just, you know, um, remove them if you don't like them. I remove a lot of uh, 
images from my portfolio. When I was doing photography, I changed my portfolio throughout eight years, I think four times. So every two years, I was literally redoing all the pictures because my skills were going up and up and up. So, you know, it's a lot of work, but it's worth it because remember, portfolio is something that's going to get you hired. And, uh, you know, it's it's really good to have, uh, have it well polished. All right. Well, thanks for watching. Hope you have learned something useful. See you in the next one.